You live in this world without hope, without God, but God can show up and change your life. That's the good news. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How God can take an old wretched sinner, save his soul, give him a home in heaven, and change his life. Boy, ain't that good. Amen. I appreciate the Lord this morning. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn with us to the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter number 90. 90. Psalms 90. Amen. Psalms 90. <clears throat> Amen. Begin reading in verse number 1. Matter of fact, we'll read the whole chapter. 17 verses here. It's of Psalms chapter 90. The Bible says, Psalms 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So God gives us insight on who wrote this psalm. There were several psalms written by several different authors. But the author of this psalm was Moses, the man of God. The man that God had called to lead the children of Israel out of bondage the man that God gave the commandments, the man that led the children of Israel right up to the brink of the promised land until the Lord took him home and Joshua took over. But this is a prayer that Moses prayed. And I believe we all need to pray. You can't pray too much. Amen. Amen. Thank God we can pray. Amen. Several things have been mentioned here this morning. Several hearts are broken. But God, thank God when we're overwhelmed, he can lead us to a rock that's higher than us. Amen. Amen. We got hope and help in this old world through our God. Amen. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. So Moses is praying. <clears throat> and he said in verse number one, what a great way to start your prayer, Lord. <laughs> thank God. He's Lord. Amen. He's over it all. He handles it all. And he can fix it. Lord, thou hast been thy dwelling place in all generations. He's speaking about the Lord before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Yeah, right. Moses said, I'm talking to the God that made the world. Yeah, right. And if he made the world, what can he not handle? Amen. Right. Thank God. Amen. That's the God we're talking to this morning. That's the God we're worshiping. Right. Amen. Thank God we're not worshiping a totem pole. Right. We're not worshiping some image. We're worshiping the God that made the world. Yeah, right. Gave us life and breath and being. Amen. And he said, Lord, you're the one. He said, verse 3, thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, return, ye children of men. Hey, God knows how to stir your life up to get you to turn back to him. And sometimes what the psalm does say, amen, until, uh, until I was fl afflicted, I went astray. And God knows how to afflict us to get our attention. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse 4, for a thousand years in thy sight, or but as yesterday, when, the, when it is past, and as they watch in the night, thou carriest them away as, a, as with a flood, they are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, and in the evening is cut down and withered, just like grass. Verse 7, for we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath, they, uh, by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Boy, God knows it all. Not only our iniquities, look what he says here, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. There ain't nothing hid from him. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. It's a story. My life, your life, Moses' life. It's a story that's told. I wonder if somebody was writing a story about your life, what would be the title of the book to draw their attention to your story? It's a told, it's tale, a tale that's told. He said in verse 10, look at this very interesting. The days of our years are three score years. That would be 60, a score being 20. Three times 20 is 60, and 10, 70 years. And if by reason 
they be four score years, it is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. He said, man's life 70 years. And if by reason God said it's 80, it's given the average of lifespan of mankind. Hey, man, we, we, I think we have a few in here. Who's anybody above 80 here today? Miss West, above 80. How many in the 70s? Brother, brother uh, Peel's over 80, right? How old are you, Brother Peel? 82. Hey Amen. We won't ask Miss West because you don't ask women how old they are. <clears throat> she looks like she's about 17, though. Amen. <laughs> 70 years. Maybe 80. On an average. I looked at the statistics just recently. Do you know, uh, uh, back in 2020, that'd be three years back, the average lifespan of a of, of a person in the world, not just the United States, was like 72, 73 years old, average. Of course, we know some die at birth, some die way above, even make it over 100, but we're talking about average life. Moses said, hey, three score and 10, 70, maybe by reason 80. He says, he says and in that life, he said, by reason of strength, they are four score, yet is their strength, Labor and sorrow. We can all associate with them in life. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. We're going to leave and spend eternity somewhere. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Verse 12 says, so. That little word, so. Because of we, these things about God, because of these things about life, because the things about our life, like grass, it comes, it flourishes, that wither away. Our life's like a tale that is told. So, because of these things we know, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Do you count the days? We're here today. Some say gone tomorrow, but sometimes gone today. We're to number our days, apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us, yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Brother D, would you pray for us today? Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, help. Oh, God, what a day. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 12, which would be our text verse in this chapter for the thought today, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts and the wisdom. I'm going to take that verse and preach on this thought today. Our days are numbered. My days, your days, everybody's days are numbered. So God exhorts us to teach us. So teach us is the prayer of Moses to God. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In this prayer of Moses, it is very obvious if you study the life of Moses that this verse 10 says the days of our years are three score and ten, 70 years. 
And if by reason of strength there are fourscore years. That's obviously a prophecy of the life of people. Because if you study the life of Moses, the man of God that prayed, that said, hey, our lives are 70 years. By the mercy and grace of God, maybe 80. But Moses, the man of God, lived 120 years. Way above 80. Way past 70. It was a prophecy of the time of mankind's life. 70 years, maybe 80. Ain't it amazing that you look at that prophecy of the lifespan of mankind? It matches the lifespan of mankind in the very hour that we're living. God's book's up to date. God knows what he's talking about, amen. According to Deuteronomy chapter 37, verse 4, Moses died at the age of 120, as we've said. Ecclesiastes said in Ecclesiastes 3 in verse 1, in the beginning of verse 2, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Hey, there's a time for all things. He said a time to be born and a time to die, to die. According to verse number 10, there are three parts when you think about a person's life. It could be Moses, it could be me, it could be you or anyone else. He said there's, there's three score and ten, eight, uh, maybe four score years of the reason of strength. He said, yet in all that, there's strength, labor, and sorrow. You know, we all have to associate with life, strength. Yeah. Early days of strength where we lay a little bit of vigor, a little strength in our lives. But then there's what? Not only strength, but there's labor. There's work to be done. There's toiling to take place. But there's also sorrow. I would say if you just uh, would examine the life of a human being, these three ingredients will be found in all of our lives. There's strength, there's labor, and there's sorrow. According to the first, uh, the fifth book in our Bible, if you turn it over to the beginning, hey, hey, we are taught very early and established in the Word of God that man, li man is born, man lives, and man dies. Amen. So-and-so begot so-and-so, so-and-so lived so many years, and he died. And he was born, and he lived, and he died. God's establishing a principle very early in the Bible that we need to get a hold of, that we like to be out of sight, out of mind, but our life starts with a birth, our life will end in death, and our life ought to do something in between. Three parts of a person's life. Life death, and the living. Amen. There's birth, life, and death. You go out in this cemetery today, and almost every tombstone, there will be a birth date, a death date, and a dash. Been many, specula uh, many, th many, many illustrations given about the dash, but think about it like this. Your birth, your death, and the line is the blank. You fill in the blank. Your life, my life, will fill in the blank of our lives. From birth to death, we fill in the blank. I think about Moses' life and him being the example of this prayer here, that you can break Moses' life down into three separate sections. Of course, we see the strength. We see the labor. We see the sorrow of his life. We see the birth. We see the death. But we see the life that is living. Hey, Moses lived 120 years old. Hey, man, and you can break his life down into four increments of 40. The first 40 years of his life, the second 40 years of his life, and the third 40 years of his life. And as you study the life of Moses when he's praying to God to teach us to number our days, we can look back to the man of God that prayed this prayer and learn some principles about life that we all live. There are three things I want to call your attention to that I believe every one of us have are in one of these three places of our life that Moses found himself in. I want to say, first of all, I see that Moses spent his first 40 years of his life in what I would call wasted days. Wasted days. Amen. A life that was void. A life that was without a purpose. A life that was living in the first 40 years of his life. They were just wasted. They were in vain. They brought no glory to God. They were wasted away, and they're gone, and you can't bring them back. Wasted days. 
Amen. You study the life of, uh, of Moses, you find it in Exodus chapter number 2, where he was born and his family looked at him as a proper child and his mother saw the fear of Pharaoh. You know the story of Moses. There's just 10 verses that, that, that cover the first 40 years of his life. 10 verses. And it's his birth and him given over to Pharaoh, put down in a river. Nothing good to say about it for God, just wasted years. But when we read the story in the book of uh, Hebrews, we find a little insight about the early years of Moses. The Bible says this in Hebrews 11 and verse 23, by faith Moses, this man of God that prayed, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. The king's commandment we know was to kill all the male children. Hey, Moses' his parents did all they could to protect him and shelter him and, and hide him away from the evil. When it came that they couldn't keep him no, no more, they had to let him go and put him in the hands of God. Hey, mom and daddy, sometimes you got to put those children in the hand of God. And the Bible said he was hid. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. The Bible says in verse 24, by faith Moses when he was come to years. It skips from the birth of his life to the time when he was come to years. This is the age of 40. At the age of 40, he realized for 40 years of his life, he had wasted it away. He had lived in the king's palace. He had been away from the people of God. He had been enjoying the pleasures of sin. The Bible said by faith when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for season. You know what Moses did the first 40 years of his life? He enjoyed sin. He indulged in sin. Everything that Egypt had to offer, it was at the fingertips of Moses. And by his record of faith, hey, he said, I can't take it no more. It's wasted life. I've got to get away from it. Amen. You know where some people are here today? You know where you're at? You're in the wasted stage of your life. It's void. It's empty. Well, preacher, I'm enjoying my life. Yeah, there's pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. Hey, but so much dope can do. Hey, but so much alcohol can do. Hey, but so much fornication can do. It can satisfy you for a little while, but it'll never fill the void in your heart. Amen. It's wasted years. Moses spent 40 years wasted down in Egypt, down with the pleasures of Egypt, away from the people of God. And at that time, he was without Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 2, and without God and without hope in this world. Hey, you know that's where you and I were when we were lost? Hey, it was wasted days, wasted years. I don't know how long you spent without knowing God, but that life was wasted. It was void. It was without God. It was without hope. It was a miserable life in this whole world. Wasted days. Void, empty. He was born to a godly family. But he was raised in the world. Do you know I'm talking to some people today? You were born to godly parents, parents that loved the Lord, but you chose not to receive the Lord. You choose, chose to do your own thing. And I'm going to tell you today, you're wasting your life away without God. Right. Without his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You that are here lost today, you're wasting your days away. Right. Your life gives no glory to God. Amen. No glory at all. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, we were created for his pleasure and not one time in your life have you given God glory. Not one time have you praised him. What? No, not one time have you served him. Not one time have you received his son. Your life has been void. It's been wasted days that you just can't bring them back. Amen. Moses said, God, so teach us to number our days. How many days have you spent wasted? How many days have you spent and weeks that turn into uh, the months and months that turn into years and years that turn into decades out there in this whole world trying to fill the void of your heart? And it cannot be done in this world. It's wasted days that you can't bring back. Amen. If this prophecy matches seven years, seven years by reason of strength, 80, 70 years, 80. If I look at my life, and if my life reaches the pattern, I don't know, I could be gone today. This year I'll turn 50 by the grace of God, but I might not make it. But if by the grace of God my life reaches the pattern of this passage, 70, between 70 and 80, 
You know what I'd have to say in my life if I look back over my own life as, I, as God has taught me the number of my days? Do you know what I can say? That I spent almost a third of my life, if I make it to this age, a third of my life wasted. Wasted. I can't get it back. I can't bring it back. Amen. At the age of 21, back in 1995, about right here in this church where there was an office before, you've heard my testimony. Hey, God saved my soul. He changed my life. He come inside of me, forgave me of my sin, gave me a home up in heaven, delivered me from hell. Thank God for salvation. But you know what? I look back over my life, a third of it, brother and brother Nolan, if I match the pattern of 70 or maybe 80, almost a third of my life was wasted life. Living for the world, feeling my own desires, having pleasure in sin, but only for a season. It was wasted and without void and brought no glory to God, amen. But one glorious day, amen, the Savior came by my way, said, boy, you don't have to waste it no more. I'll give you a life worth living. I'll give you joy down in your heart. I'll give you peace beyond understanding, amen. And God saved my glorious soul by his glorious grace and mercy, amen. Thank God he came by. Amen. Amen. God can turn your wasted days into a life worth living. Amen. Some of you here today, your life's waste. It's without God. It's without hope. Amen. You say, preacher, I love the Lord. I believe he's a God, and I believe he made this thing. I got better sense than that. Yeah, but you've never received him as your Savior. Yeah, right. You never asked him to come into your heart and save your soul. So your life's been wasted out in this old world. Do you know what I realized in my life? Hey, before I was saved, I didn't realize what was wrong with me. Many of you had no clue what was wrong with you. Hey, but you know what we all had in common? We all knew we was missing something. Hey, the person in this building didn't realize they were missing something. There was a void down in your heart. You couldn't answer it. You couldn't understand it. Hey, man, I wasn't brought up in church. I wasn't brought up around the Bible. I didn't know about God, so I was ignorant of these things, but I knew something was missing in my heart. Hey, one day a man of God took the Bible and said, what you're missing is God. The God that made you is the God that wants you to serve him. The God that made you wants you to be saved. And if you trust him, he'd feel the longing of your heart. Amen. Amen. That glorious day, I realized all my life what I'd been missing. That all the things in the world couldn't feel. Maybe a temporal satisfaction or a temporal peace, but it couldn't feel the longing of my soul. It was wasted days. Wasted life. Moses spent 40 years wasted. Couldn't bring it back. Now that I see that when we break down his life into three 40s, the first 40 years were wasted. Then he had a second 40. Amen. This second 40 was after he had made a decision to no longer be the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You know what Moses decided? I didn't want the devil to be my God no more. I wanted the God of glory to be my God. And I didn't want the pleasure of Egypt. They couldn't fill my void no how. They couldn't satisfy me. It was something missing. It was serving God with the people of God outside the palace. It was serving God down the place of worship. I couldn't find it in this world, but I can't take it no more. He got to the point where he had to give his life over to God. And he went out, and the Bible says that he saw the Egyptians abusing the people of God. And how the world was beating out the people of God. And those were his people. That was his God. And he didn't want Pharaoh's God anymore. He wanted the God of Israel to be his God. And he trusted the God of Israel as his Savior. He took that step of faith and walked out. But the next 40 years after he had made that step, when you study his life, they were spent what I call wonder years. Wasted years that for some reason or another led to wandering years. When I study the life of Moses, and I see that he was a man that wasted 40 years, but there come a point in the time of his life where he couldn't take it no more. He had to give in to God. He had to find some relief for his soul. He had to put his trust in the God of heaven, and he put his trust in the God of heaven. But listen, it didn't turn out like he dreamed it. Yes, God had become his God, Yes, he had rejected the world. Yes, he had put his faith in the God of Israel. Yes, in that sense of the world, he'd become one of God's children. But there was no victory. You remember those days when God saved you and brought instant victory from the world? 
He moved inside your soul. He saved you from hell. He gave you a home in heaven. He writ your name down in glory. And sometime after that, it just seemed like you were glad you wasn't a child of the devil no more. You were glad you were a child of God. But for some reason or another, you spent your years wondering. Some of you are there today. You're saved. You put your trust in God. He has saved your soul. But just like Moses, you're on the backside of the desert out of nowhere, away from the people of God, away from a walk with God, away from where you are to be, even though you know God. Yeah, you're right. Moses spent his second 40 years on the backside of the desert wandering. Seven verses in the Bible depicts that lifespan of 40 years. Just seven. Sums it up. Nothing bad really to say, but nothing good to say. There are some of you here today that are saved. God has taught you to number your days. You put your trust in God and he saved you from hell. You're going to heaven. You know the Lord is your Savior, but your life's just still a wandering around. You're like Moses on the backside of the desert. You felt like, well, I've accepted the Lord. You ain't going to talk me out of heaven, preacher. I know I'm going there. But I've really never got anything done for God in my life. When you come to God to get saved, one of the first things you need to realize is that the devil will do all he can to fight you. Oh, Moses made a great step of faith. He stepped out and trusted God but it didn't turn out like he dreamed it. There was trials and tribulations in life. Amen? Amen. He he, he had sold out to the Lord, but trouble had come his way. He started out on fire. Started out loving God. He started out with so much zeal that he defended the children of Israel and slew an Egyptian to try to take care of his people. But even in his zeal, he found defeat. Moses just ran off in those next 40 years as a saved individual wandering in the wilderness. Moses runs off. He gets married. He has two boys out on the backside of the desert just tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. Out of Egypt, away from Pharaoh, belongs to God, but not in the will of God just wandering around in his life. It's called wandering days, amen. He came out there and the Bible said he named his first son Gershom. Gershom. You know, you know what Gershom means when he named that son that and his, and his son's name meant something? It meant a stranger. You know what Moses realized? Yes, I know God, but I'm away from God and I'm like a stranger to God. I'm not serving him like I'm sure. I'm not getting anything done. Yes, I don't belong to the world. Yes, I'm out of Pharaoh's palace. Yes, I know God of Israel, but I'm not serving him. I'm just wandering around. I'm preaching to some people today. Hey, man, you, you've numbered your days. Hey, you got a day where God saved you. You thank God for it, and he changed your life, and you belong to him. But since then, all you've done is wondered. You're not getting really anything done for God. Maybe you've got married. Maybe you got a couple of children now, or maybe you're planning on it, and that's the future of your life, but God's not in your surroundings. You're just out there just beating around, just wondering. Moses spent the next 40, 40 years in the days of wonder, away from God, getting nothing done for God. Hey, this is a life that's going nowhere. Hey, some of you here today, you belong to God, and I'm glad you do. I'm glad you're saved. I'm glad heaven's your home. I'm glad God has saved you, but you've done nothing since he saved you. Just stumbling around. You're really going nowhere. If somebody was to ask you, where are you going in your life with God? What could you tell them? You don't know yourself because you're wondering. You're like Moses. Well, I got a family now. Well, you know, we kind of love the Lord and we're not really got a calling, but, uh, uh, you know, just to be honest, we ain't getting nothing done. We have no direction. We have no purpose. We're just wondering. The Bible says, Moses said, Lord, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts in the wisdom. Now, I don't know when Moses actually penned those words, 
But I kind of wonder if Moses is looking back over his own life when he pins these words by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and he's looking back over his life and he said, you know what? I can say the first 40 years of my life were squandered away. Got nothing done. Didn't even know the God of glory. Didn't worship the God of glory. I lived in the pleasures of this world. But now I look back and I remember the day that I took a step of faith and I trusted the God of glory and I left the world and I chose God's way and I stepped out on fire to do something for God and God saved my soul. And then after I stepped out and God had given me victory, I found myself back on my face. And for 40 years of my life, I had a wife. I had a good job. I was keeping the cattle. I had two sons along the way. But really outside of that, I'd done nothing for God. Not a thing was accomplished. Hey, some of you here today, you know the Lord. You're saved. I'm glad you are. But all your life is is wandering. Bouncing from pillar to post. Getting nothing done for God. And the Bible says, Moses said, hey, so Lord, teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. A wanderer is a rambler. Here and there. Without any certain course or object in view. They've not got their eyes on the finish line, which is, which is Jesus Christ. They have no goals and ambitions for the Lord. This is a lie that has been saved from hell by God, but has done nothing with it since God saved them. There's not any recording of Moses trying to lead anybody else to his God. No witnessing in his life. No walk of God in his life. Yeah, he ain't out there in Egypt. Yeah, he ain't doing the world's things anymore, but he ain't doing nothing for God neither. It's just wasted, wandering days away from God. When I look at the life of Moses, I see the first 40 that represents the wasted days of a sinner lost without God. I look at the second 40 years of his life, even as a child of God, it was days of wandering. But then I look at the last 40 years of his life. It's the days of the working days. Do you know what's good about Moses? Number one, he got out from the world, became God's child. Amen. That's the greatest thing. But he woke up before it was too late. Do you know what he realized? One day on the backside of the desert, I don't know what it was called, but we'll call it for the sake of good preaching. He was down at the Burning Bush Baptist Church. And he's down at Burnish Book Baptist Church where he spent 40 years out there in the wilderness and for one reason, one reason or another, he stumbled out on that church service down there. The Bible said when he showed up on that church ground, God said, this is holy ground. Take off your shoes, Moses. And Moses showed up in a worship service with God. And it was the burning bush. It was him and God. And God said, Moses, now it's time for you to get serious. You wandered around. Yes, you got a wife. Yes, you're away from the world. But son, it's about time you start getting something done for me. He had an encounter with God down in an old-fashioned worship service. And the fire of God was burning down in his bosom. And God said, son, I got something I want you to do. It was the working days of his life. Hey, there's some of you here today that are in the wasted days, lost without God. Some of you are in the wandering years, but some of you are on the brink of God saying, hey, enough's enough. It's time you go to work for God, amen. It's got a job for you to do. And God showed up to Moses on the backside of the desert where there was 10 verses or so that depicted his early life, a birth, and that was it in the palace of Egypt, wasted. Seven verses of so wandering in the wilderness. But then God begins to describe the working days of Moses. It goes from Exodus chapter 3 all the way through Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and even picks up in some of the else the places of the Bible. It was a life worth speaking about. It was a life worth living. Amen. Moses' life was void and getting nothing done. But when he got serious with God, God began to pin it down and said, this is the life of a child of God, a life of serving the Savior. Amen. 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 Do you know the sooner we get to this place in our life, the better off we're all going to be? God, teach us to number our days. Hey, I pray the Holy Ghost of God has surrender your heart today and get you to examine your life. You got a day where you met the Lord? Put it on the scale of 70, maybe 80 years. How long did it take to get saved? 
Some of you children got saved at a very young age. Glory be to God. Some of you have less wasted days than some of us. Some have more wasted days than others. Some of you are saved a little bit later on in life. But glory be to God, ain't it good to be saved? The Savior's moved in. But I wonder if you looked at your timeline to light, uh, today of your life, how many days have been spent wondering? Yes, you know the Lord saved you, but what have you really done since then? How much have you spoke to the world about him? How much life have you lived? How much praying have you done? How much service to God has been brought forth in your life? Amen. Hey, these are days surrendered to the call of God. Amen. Moses said, whatever you want, whenever you want it, wherever you want it, here's my life. God, I'll give it to you. It ain't much. But if you take it, you can have it. Amen. Right. Yeah, right. Moses, early on in his life, when God began to deal with him about the call of God in his life, he had doubts. Well, the Lord, I can't speak well, and I can't talk very eloquent. And God said, son, it ain't you, it's me. I want to use you, and if you'll let me, I'll use you. Hey, I can say today, God's been good to this boy. God has been good to me. Thank God for the use of God in our lives. Can you speak well? No, but my God can. Do you got much power? No, but my God does. Do you got something to say? No, but my God's got something to say. And it's a life worth living, serving God. It was the working days of Moses' life. Amen. It was during this time of his life where he got his calling from God. It was during this time that he got his commission from God. It was in this time when he got the commandments of God. It was the working days of the life of Moses. Number your days. It's a life of Moses. When you study the life of Moses, it was during this time when all the miracles were wrought. Nothing was wrought in Egypt but hell raising and a life he'd love to forget about. Nothing on the back side of the desert other than a wife and children, and glory be to God for that stuff. But as far as God is concerned, there were no miracles. Amen. There were no victories. There was no deliverance. There was no songs that were sung. There was no joy that was down mentioned of. There was no peace that was there. Amen. Hey, hey, yes, there were heartaches. Hey, yes, there were hard times in his life working for God. But the great times outweighed the bad times. And God is worth serving. Amen. It's a life of working for God. So life surrendered to God. In my life of serving God, I've seen enjoyment. I've experienced, you know what I can say in my life? As I look at my life, you look at your life. You know what I can say? At the age of 21, I spent 21 years. That would be wasted life. Several years after I got saved, we're just kind of bouncing around in church, trying to do right, but you're really just wandering, wandering around. And then the Lord called me to preach and put me in the ministry. And I'd hope to say that if God tarries, I'll be 50 this year, and I've had more on this side than I had on that side. And hope to God I had more working days than I had wandering days and wasted days combined. Well, I surrender to the call of God, the will of God in my life. And you know what I can say? It is worth serving God, amen. It's worth all the surrender. It's worth all the heartache. It's worth all the trouble serving God, amen. God's worth serving. You say, preacher, all their troubles, all many. But you know what? I wouldn't trade them one bit. I wouldn't go back to the world for nothing that has the offer. Hey, 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 my worst day as a Christian is better than my best day as a sinner. There's nothing like being a child of God. Why? Because God is good. I'm like Brother Mark said this week. Hey, man, hey, God's been, God's given me a life I couldn't dream up. Couldn't dream the life I got. Raised in the sticks of this county, poor as dirt. Didn't go nowhere but to school on the school bus. Had nothing and no hope and without God. And one day I came into this church, an old lost sinner, and God saved my soul, called me in the ministry, let me travel the world and preach the gospel. God's been better than me I can ever dream of. It's worth serving God. Of all the times I cried as a young boy wondering what's wrong. What's wrong? Well, you don't got what everybody else has got. You're in a busted home. There's not much to speak of, and you wonder what's life all about. But boy, when I found Jesus, or should I say when he found me, thank God he found me. 
and gave me a life and I realized what I'd been missing all my life was a Savior and saved my soul and gave me a life worth serving. Couldn't dream it up. Hollywood couldn't write the script, man. Thank God. Ain't it good to serve the Lord? You know what some of you are missing? You're saved and you're not going to hell. I'm glad you're missing that part. I'm glad you're going to heaven. But you've never really experienced working with God. We're created for his glory and honor. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. They some of you. Well, Moses prayed. So, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. How much more are you going to wonder? How much more are you going to wait to surrender? You said, preacher, it's fearful to surrender. Yeah, it was fearful to Moses. It's fearful to me. It was fearful to others. But you know what? When we look back, hindsight's 2020. It sure was worth it. Moses would have never seen the miracles. He would have, have never seen the Egyptians come out of bondage. He had never seen the parting of the Red Sea. He had never been able to look over in the promised land. He had never seen God came by time after time and feed them day after day and bless them every time they needed it. Hey, he had never experienced the blessings of God if he had stayed wandering on the backside of the desert. Hey, why keep wandering, child of God, when there's so much potential and so much joy out there serving God? You know why some of you are miserable and you're saved? They're saved people that are miserable. You know why? Because you're just still a wandering. No purpose. No direction. Just bouncing around. Punching the clock. See what happens. And miserable. Why not let the Lord teach you today to number your days? They some of you here today. You know what you need to do? They some of you need to be saved. That's the problem. You say, how you know, preacher? Because I've been in your shoes. There ain't no happiness in this world. You'll enjoy it, but listen, listen, you'll have to, you'll have to agree with me. It might be fun while it's happening, but when the dust settled and it's all over, you know what you realize? I'm still empty. I'm still empty. It's like the woman at the well. You just have to keep dropping the well a little bit deeper to try to find a little more satisfaction. He's got to, it takes a little more to get there. It takes a little more effort. It takes a little bit more money. It takes a little more, more dope. It takes a little bit more drugs. It takes a little bit more sexual activity. Hey, more to feel it, trying to find happiness that will never feel it. But God can give you a life, spring it up into everlasting life. And if you'd call on his son, he'd save your soul. Amen. And give you a home in heaven and deliver you from hell and fill the void of your heart today. Some of you just need to be saved. That's the whole problem. Jesus Christ is the answer. It's the gospel. You say, preacher, how do I get saved? It's simple. The Bible said, whosoever, you know who whosoever is? Whosoever. Shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what our Lord did? Our Lord came to this world and died on an old rugged cross and he died for our sins. Because it's our sins that's keeping us from heaven. It's our sins that's leading us to hell, our unbelief in God. But he died for our sins that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you trust God's death, burial, and resurrection for your sin and call on him, God, to save you today. Amen. It's that simple. Right. God, here I am, a sinner. Save me. I have wasted my life, and I want to be saved. That's all I want. Some of you need to realize today you've been wondering. You're saved, but it's wondered life. No victory. You know what you need to do today? Some of you need to lay your life on an altar today and say, God, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I can go to the place and the time where I met you and you saved my soul. But you know what? As I number my days and I think about my life, there's been a lot of wondering. And I want you to know my life is laid on this altar today for whatever you want. I want to experience the blessings of Christianity. I want to see you work in my life. I want you to use me in whatever caliber you want. My life is given unto you. Some of you need to do that today. Hey, some of you have been working. And you know what? The devil's been a fighting. 
And boy, he hates people that are working. And you need to lay yourself on the altar and say, God, I'm glad you're using me. And I know the devil's fighting, but give me grace to keep pressing on. Because I realize one day as the brother prayed and we read this morning, we're going to fly away. And until we fly away, God, keep me working, keep me serving, keep me surrendered to your will. Moses said, so Lord, so teach us. That's an individual thing. To number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Death is coming. Your birth has already happened. How will you fill in the blank? What is your life? Is it wasted? Is it wandering? Or is it working? Everybody in this building is in one of those places. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Sister, if you'd come to the piano and play, if you're here today and God has spoken to your heart, why don't you come? Let me exhort you, if you're here and you're lost and your life's wasted, you say, preacher, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. That's all right. God knows what to do. If you'd bow before the Lord right now, Maybe come down this altar. Let somebody take a Bible and help you if you want that. But where you're at at this moment, if you tell the Lord, God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know my life has been a waste. As far as you are concerned, I've wasted it. I'm without hope. I'm without peace. God, I've tried to feel it everywhere but you. But if you'd save me today, Oh, God, if you'd save me today, I'm putting my faith and trust in your shed blood. That preacher said you died for my sins. And I want you to be my Savior today. I'm telling you, God will save you right where you're at. God will give you a life worth living. Why don't you call on him and be saved? Maybe you're here today and you're wondering. Oh, it's time to quit wasting it away. It's time to quit wandering around. Well, if there's ever a time to get busy for God, it's now. Get serious. Lay your life on an altar today and say, God, here it is, whatever, whenever, however, you got me. Do whatever you want. If God's using you, you ought to thank him he's using you. Ask him to keep you in the straight and narrow way. Get you some help today. God wants to help you. Oh, God wants to help you. No matter what it is today, God's the answer. You don't have to understand it all. All you need to do is trust Him. Trust Him. There's no better life than a life being saved. There's no better peace than peace knowing that heaven is my home and hell will never be. There's no more victory, child of God, than there is in serving God. Come on, get you some help. If you can't get up, pray where you're at. Get you some help. While God's calling, you answer. Turn him not away. Number your days. Some of you are well past halfway and have still never accomplished a thing. Some are well past near the end and still not saved. Still not say. Come get you some help. God will help you. He's able. You can give it to Him. Thank God there's help in Jesus.
Lord, it's soon cut off and we fly away. Where will you fly? Where will you spend eternity? Well, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad he passed by my way. Let's all stand. Let's sing a verse or something before we go. If you still need to come, you come. Yes, I'm.